Welcome to The Metal Collector! Today I'm going to show you five of the albums that disappointed me when they were released and five albums that really surprised me when they were released. Stay tuned. Welcome once again to The Metal Collector. Today I'm going to show you five albums that surprised me when they were released and five albums that disappointed me. And we'll start off with uh, the disappointing stuff and we'll end with the more positive ones, the albums that surprised me. Now, there are still a lot of albums that disappointed me when they were released and the opposite way also, surprisingly, albums, uh, good albums. But I've chosen five of those that really uh, did their job in one way or another. So let's start out with the disappointing stuff. The Danish band As We Fight released this Meet Your Maker, the third album. And I was a big fan of the band and especially the first EP they released and the, the first album. The second album, uh, Midnight Tornado, is also pretty good. Uh, and then they had a lot of lineup changes and uh, they, you know, released this one, the third album. I was very disappointed. It's not that it's a, a bad album, but for a band that had uh, released uh, Black Nails and Bloody Wrist, the debut album and the EP uh, and, and the second album, th this one just, it, it it lost me, really. I was, uh, I didn't know what to think of this. I heard it a lot when it came out and I just, you know, it sounds like many of the other albums, Danish albums that came in this period, it's from 2009. Uh, in this period, there was a lot of other albums that sounded much like this. So it, it was just another one of those albums, unfortunately. And the band dissolved uh, after this came out. So I still hope that uh, some of the original members will get back together and, and do some reunion shows. That could be cool. But until then, I'll just uh, listen to the first two albums and the EP. So the next disappointing album is by the Doom Metal Kings, My Dying Bright. 34.788% uh, completed. Um, these are the guys that released classics like Turn Who's the Swans and The Angel and the Dark River. Uh, like Gust of the Sun is also a good album. And this came out. It's a very experimenting album. And I just didn't know what to think of it when it was released. I still don't. <laughs> it's 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 a very strange album. Uh, a lot of electronic uh, inputs and, and some, you know, everything is just a strange mix of of stuff. I have a friend who who is a big But I'm Bright fan. And when it was released, he didn't know what to think of it either. But today he... He says, anyway, that uh, it has grown on him and he likes the album today. It's not so long ago I, I listened to it again and I, it, it, it doesn't seem to grow on me. And I've listened to it many times, it, it's, but it's very strange. This was a big disappointment for me. Luckily, they returned to, to the uh, more Madame Bright uh, kind of sound. Uh, but I think, it's, I think it's, it's brave and fresh for a band to try something new especially when they try something extraordinary new, but this is just too much in my opinion. Uh, not my favorite My Dying Bride album, let's just say that. And a big disappointment for me when it was released. Album number three, I recently did a video on Hammerfall. This is chapter five, the, five, uh, the fifth album. <laughs> this album is the one um, I would say that really shows which direction the band would go into after uh, what I would call the classic Hammerfall period. I love the first three albums still to this day. And Crimson Thunder is also a good album. It, it also disappointed me when it just was released, but it grew on me and, and today I would consider it a very decent album. But this album, it came out and Take the Black is perhaps my favorite song uh, that gives me something, but the rest is, man, uh, I'm sorry to say about one of my all-time favorite uh, bands, but it just it, it's, it sounds boring. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Um, luckily, there were a lot of 
new fans coming in to the band when this was released and they think this is for for example if this is the first album you hear with Hammerfall you would probably have a nostalgic nostalgic relationship for it and that's fine with me but for me the first three albums still is what I would consider the biggest moment of Hammerfall's career and this is one of the uh, lower uh, low points so the next one is Judas Priest Nostradamus. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> um, they, in my opinion, the band have never released a bad album. But this album, it, it really... I don't know what to think of it still. I put it on uh, sometimes, but it's very difficult to get all the way through. It's a t two, uh, two discs filled with you know, again, when Halford were back in the band, they released Angel of Retribution, which uh, I think is a good album. And I heard that they would do a double album. And I felt, okay, that will be cool. I heard it would be a concept album about Nostradamus. I thought, okay, that will be interesting. So I had, my expectations were, okay, high. And then came this came out and I was just like, no, 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 no. A little bit. It sounds like they have a lot of overtures and build-ups for something that never comes. And the songs, um, it's its my, I would say this is the weakest release from Judas Priest and probably also the one that has taken most time to do. So uh, luckily the band uh, just went back to, to do what they do best and, and play good old simple heavy metal and uh, again with the new album especially the new album holy christ it's good uh this is this is not their high point in their career let's just say that very disappoint a big disappointment for me when this was released here comes the last one in the line of the disappointing albums if any of you i think if any of you should do a list like this this would probably be on many's list Metallica saying anger. Yeah, not so much to say. Um, still considered uh, <laughs> the low point of Metallica and people still make fun of the production and, and the snare uh, drum. And, you know, I know the band went through some serious stuff at this moment and I think that's why the album sounds so... sound the way it do, does, yeah. And, and again, the production is one thing, but also the songwriting for uh, in general it's it's not it's not strong songs there are some some you know francis and saint anger has uh, at least some some uh, ideas that are pretty good some kind of monster the main riff is okay uh, dirty window was my favorite when it was just released but in general this is a weak album i think still is and yeah not not so much to say i, I won't go into the bashing about this album it has been through enough <laughs> it has been bullied enough and i don't want to bully it anymore but this was a big disappointment for me thinking of those guys i was one of those guys that liked load and reload so and if this was the thing they could do if they tried to go back to the metallic roots i would prefer to have had another reload a tree load let's have called it that now Let's go into the albums that surprised me when they were released. Starting out with the Danish band Illness Post. Good, brutal, groovy death metal. Not as brutal as, as many other bands, but still. If you don't know Illness Post, check them out. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good band. Um, especially the old stuff, I'm a fan of that. This album, when it was released, they had just signed with Roadrunner. And it this came out after the album Cocainum, which... Uh, at that time, what uh, were considered a weak album from the band. I, I think it was an okay album, but it's not as good as uh, the former uh, albums. Like, for example, There's Something Rotten in the State of Denmark, which is one of my all-time favorite Danish releases. And Submit, uh, that is uh, perhaps the Ildis Post classic. And then one of the most classic uh, death metal albums, their debut album, Four Depressive Seasons, uh, they, that was in the catalog. And then Cocainum was just like, ah, yeah, it's okay, but it sounds a little bit too uh, rushed. So, But this came out 
And I didn't know what to expect from this. It was, it was just like, yeah, here comes a new Illness Post album. But this man, 1-800 Vindication, just blew my mind straight off. It's filled with the the greatest um, grooviness of the band, combined in a mixture with some of the coolest breaks I've ever heard on any albums. And then it was uh, the details with the, the small electronic parts here and there, just uh, added a lot of, yeah, uh, this is just great. And there, was a, there are a couple of songs with uh, some clean vocals. It's not uh, Bo, uh, the growler in the band, the front man. It's not him who sings the clean vocals. But um, yeah, th this is just a good, good album. And I didn't expect it this when it came out. I listened to this, one of the albums I've listened to most, I think, from the Danish collection. <laughs> the next one is Machine Head through the ashes of empires. Supercharger had just been released before this album and I was not <laughs> a happy person for the Supercharger album. Uh, the first album is one of the greatest metal releases in the 90s, Burn My Eyes. I still love that album to this day. Uh, what a debut. Uh, the More Things Change was a decent follow-up and then they tried uh, something new. They tried to get a more new metal kind of sound on uh, the Burning Red. And Supercharger just, it sounded, uh, it, it, it missed something. I don't know, but I wasn't a fan of that album. So I hadn't any expectations for the next Machine Head album. And then they brought this out to us. And I was just like, okay, Machine Head's back. This is metal. And uh, the whole you know, production is one thing, but the songwriting is amazing. And all the members sound... Uh, angry and fresh at the same time they have they have a point to make with this album they are back <laughs> and and i remember i saw a documentary about recording this and uh, rob flynn said that it was just like after the supercharger period they just uh, wanted to do an album just wanted to do a metal album so they didn't think uh, about anything they just wrote what they what felt uh into it and, and and this came out so this is uh my second favorite with machine head i know a lot of people think the blackening the follow-up for this album is um the new greatest album with machine head in my opinion this is it we've already talked about judas priest here comes hellford resurrection he this is his comeback album uh, to the metal stage after his 90s ex experimenting stuff and I hadn't any expectations for this album. Actually, I, I didn't knew he was back before the album hit the streets. Uh, and suddenly, I, I, this, this was a present for me, I think, at, at Christmas night or something. I got, I got it in a, in, in a present. And I put it on later that night. And I was just blown away. This is great. Sounds like Halford. <laughs> uh, not so much to say. The title track is one of the greatest heavy metal tunes ever. It, it sounds like the new Judas Priest in some ways. And there are some weak spots. Twist, I'm not so thrilled for that song. But in general, this album just kicks ass and I was numbed when it came out. I hadn't expected anything. So one of the greatest heavy metal albums of all time. His comeback to the metal stage. <laughs> the next one is Iron Maiden's Brave New World. I would say I was not... One of those that uh, bullied uh, Blaze Bailey when he was in the band. I actually enjoy X Factor and Virtual Eleven, those two albums. <laughs> um, I know that those two albums they can't live up to, you know, they can't live up to the old stuff, of course. But there are a lot of decent and good moments on those two albums. But still, it was a thrill to hear that Bruce Dickinson and Adrian Smith came back to the band. My expectations were around uh, here, and the album just went over that. This is one hell of an album. Um, I didn't expect it this. This is a monster. And I remember I, when this was released, I played it all the time. It was just one uh, of the most played albums in my collection that year. And, and for the years to follow, I love this album. And, and I really it, it surprised me that a band uh could still do an album like this there was yeah 
I, I bet uh, many of you, it, it's a new classic, and it's, uh, in my opinion, the best Iron Maiden album from the newer period. And, yeah, not so much to say. Here comes the last surprisingly album, the last album that surprised me. Let's say that. Black Sabbath 13. Not so much to say. I, I didn't expect that the band could release an album like this. Uh, I heard Ozzy were going to do this last Black Sabbath album with Tony and Geezer, and then this would be the end. And in the beginning, Bill Ward was also included in the news about this. So that was just like, yeah. That, how cool would that be? The grandfathers of heavy metal uh, getting back together after all the problems and all the issues that has been in that band and, and the whole story. It would be perfect to complete the story with the original four members doing one last album. And unfortunately, Bill Ward wasn't a part of those plans, uh, apparently. And I was, I was very sad about that fact. I'd hoped for something. So my expectation went actually from here till here, not just because of Bill Ward, but because of the whole, uh, the whole atmosphere that suddenly surrounded this release. And then it came out, and I was just, holy Moses, <laughs> this is like uh, the missing. No, no, it's not the missing link. This is just how the album should sound like. I know Bill Ward is is missing but the drummer on this i can't remember his name the old race against the machine drummer uh really did a good job he sounds like bill did in the early 70s albums uh a little bit jazzy and it just completes the album and tony's riffs are some of the greatest stuff he had been writing for the last many years and us his vocals just sound perfect for this and geezer's bass only yeah this is one great album. The only thing I miss about 13 is some... that I think they should have included one song at least that could have been the hook song for the album. You know, like, I, I know a loner uh, is perhaps the closest you can get to a song like that, but a song like, for example, Iron Man, uh, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, NIB, something like that, a hook song. But anyway, uh, the album in general is just amazing. I love this album. And I think it's a good last album from Black Sabbath. If it's going to be the last album. <laughs> Time will tell. But yeah, this was my list. Over five album that, albums that disappointed me and five albums that really surprised me when they were released. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again uh, in the next video. And uh, until then, stay metal!